yet the deepest truths are best read between the lines and, for the most part, refuse to be written. Have you ever wondered about the deeper mysteries behind Isaac's story in the Bible? According to Jewish tradition, Isaac wasn't just a young boy during the attempted sacrifice. He was 36, fully aware, and perhaps even willing to die. But what if there's more to this tale than what we've been told? Why would Abraham, a devout follower of what he claimed to be a just and loving God, even contemplate such a sacrifice? Was it a test of faith or something far more profound? And why was Isaac, not his other sons, chosen for an eternal covenant? Was there a hidden significance in the renaming of Sarai to Sarah, meaning princess, after their encounter in Egypt, if Abraham wasn't a king? Let's peel back the layers of this ancient story and uncover the alternative truths hidden between the lines. Let's start with the mysterious circumstances of Isaac's conception. We're told that Sarai remained barren until after their time in Egypt, when she suddenly conceived seemingly as a gift from God. This was a pivotal moment. God made three profound pronouncements. Abram became Abraham, meaning father of multitudes. Circumcision, a practice already known in Egypt, was established. And Sarai was renamed Sarah, meaning princess. Could Sarah's new title have a deeper connection to Egypt? If she had married Pharaoh, she would indeed have been a princess. This might also explain why Pharaoh showered Abraham with gifts, sheep, cattle, donkeys, camels, and servants, following the Egyptian custom of offering a dowry for marriage. In Genesis 17, God promises Abraham that Sarah will be the mother of nations, stating that kings of people shall come from her. With Isaac's birth, Abraham indeed fulfills his destiny as the father of multitudes. However, here's something intriguing. Unlike in the story of King Abimelech, where it is mentioned that he didn't go near Sarah, the Bible does not make such an explicit statement when it comes to Pharaoh and Sarah during her time in Egypt. Could this imply that Isaac's true father was Pharaoh? Is this why God promised the Jewish people to inherit the land of Egypt in Genesis 15, 18, saying, to your descendants, I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. This hints at a profound connection between Sarah, Pharaoh, and the land of Egypt. The reference to the river of Egypt isn't merely geographical. It suggests a shared destiny between Abraham's lineage and the rulers of Egypt. Sarah's interaction with Pharaoh far from being a brief episode, may signify a deeper political and possibly royal link, suggesting that Egypt's influence over Abraham's family extended beyond simple encounters. Now, let's turn our attention to the sacrifice itself. At the time God gave the command, Abraham was living in the land of the Philistines, near the Egyptian border. This suggests that his journey with Isaac to perform the sacrifice could have been easily completed within three days. Early biblical translations refer to the destination as the land of worship rather than the land of Moriah, as modern texts indicate. Therefore, it is possible the mysterious region of Moriah was actually Egypt, which at that time was known for its devoted worship and numerous temples, hence, the land of worship. The Targum Jonathan, an ancient Aramaic interpretation of the Torah, adds another intriguing layer. It claims that Isaac wasn't a child during the sacrifice, but a 36-year-old man. This also hints that Isaac could have already been married to Rebekah and could have fathered his children prior to the sacrifice. Interestingly, while the King James Bible says both Abraham and Isaac ascended the mountain, only Abraham is mentioned upon returning. 
there's no explicit reference to Isaac descending with him. According to the Targum Jonathan, Isaac was fully aware of the situation and willingly accepted his fate. He even asked Abraham to bind him tightly to prevent any involuntary movement. Strangely, rather than showing sorrow, Abraham felt joy and gave thanks to God for allowing him to fulfill this divine command. The Targum further suggests that Isaac wasn't killed per se, but instead was taken by angels to the school of Shem the Great, which is why Abraham returned alone. This raises the question, why did Abraham head to Beersheba instead of returning to Sarah? The answer may lie in the following verses, where the Targum Jonathan implies that Sarah, upon hearing of the sacrifice and death of Isaac, was so stricken with grief that she took her own life. This could be the reason why the King James Bible begins the following chapter, by abruptly informing us of Sarah's death, without any details of the cause. This may also explain why Isaac is barely mentioned in the subsequent chapters. This exploration leaves us with more uncertainties than clear answers. Isaac's true father may have been Pharaoh, linking him not only to Abraham, but also to the rulers of Egypt. Perhaps this connection explains why Isaac, rather than Ishmael or Abraham's other sons, was chosen. Sarah's renaming after their encounter in Egypt was likely more than symbolic, potentially pointing to royal ties that remain obscure. Moreover, the land of Moriah could very well have been Egypt, with Isaac's destiny tied to ancient practices that still elude us. These lingering questions challenge the traditional narrative of Isaac, Sarah, and Abraham, suggesting that history as we know it might hold deeper, hidden truths waiting to be uncovered. <laughs>